Hi everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner and Arlen's Travels. How in the world is everyone doing today? So good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see me. Well, as you all saw the other day, I went ahead and put up my packing video, but I had recorded that before we left for our Alaska cruise, for our latest Alaska cruise. And I am recording this on Monday, so I am back, literally back from my cruise, and I brought along everything that I purchased or was given on this cruise and I'm gonna go through and give my cruise report I think this time I think I'm gonna go right through the itinerary and tell you what we did and just pretty much share my thoughts about this cruise so let's get started I don't want to sit here and yammer on along for very long other than to say I missed you guys terribly uh, I thought about you many many days on our cruise and um, I really did miss YouTube and I missed interacting with you guys and I wondered how you guys were doing and what y'all were up to and so on. So I will get back to my crafting next week for those of you who are watching me through uh, Arlen's Country Craft Corner. I will definitely be getting back and gearing up for fall, for my fall decor. Uh, we might be getting company this weekend so I really can't do anything uh, to my house to get it all in disarray. Um, until after next weekend so but I will be coming back live on Friday uh, to do a live just to chit chat with you and to do a little bit of a haul I just went to Joanne's this morning so I'll share that with you on Friday and uh, I may have another video uh, this week of our stateroom tour and stuff like that to do with my cruise but this week I'm going to get concentrate on getting all of my cruise information out there as much as I can and uh, so let's get started with this for those of you who don't know, uh, I am one of two admins and three moderators in the Alaska Cruises on Princess group on Facebook. And the other admin and I are the ones that hosted a little bit of a group cruise. Now, that can mean a lot of things. For us, it meant that we pretty much just hosted a meet and greet after the muster drill on our first day and then we you know whenever we saw folks in the cruise later we'd stop and hug I always hugged them <laughs> and talked and just to see how they were doing you know and ask them how they were doing on their cruises on their cruise and on their excursions and you know that kind of thing but I'll get back to when the cruise started here in just a second I'm still recovering with a little bit of jet lag there's a four hour difference from the East Coast to Alaska and uh, so, and a three hour difference from, of course, the West Coast to the East Coast. So I am still pretty tired and trying to recover <laughs> from the cruise. I'm knocking on wood so far, it doesn't look like I gained much weight from it, which I, I was a bit careful, but I did give myself, you know, some sweet treats and some carbs. And, you know, I kind of blew my diet a day or two for sure. Uh, but I got right back on when we got home and haven't swayed again and you know how you get water weight and that kind of stuff with the cruise or with any vacation I guess but all of that is uh, going away so right now I'm I gained eight pounds and I've lost five of that so I'm still about three three and a half pounds you know away from where I was on the day I left which I feel sure I'll get there get back there no problem anyway uh, let me start by saying that Chris and I uh, we flew out of Richmond International Airport uh, on Friday the 10th, August the 10th, and then we flew from there to Atlanta and had about an hour and a half or so layover, and then we flew from Atlanta to Seattle, and Seattle is where we caught our cruise ship the next day. Now, for those of you who might be watching me for the first time, I will give you a recommendation that I give to everyone. And that is, if you are cruising, always, 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 especially if you're flying, but even if you're driving, always go a day before your cruise is scheduled to set sail. You never know what could happen when you're traveling to the cruise port, especially when you're flying with the way the airlines are. Your plane could break down, it could get delayed because of weather, it could, you know, 
whatever. You just never know what might happen on the day, you know, of your cruise. So I always recommend that you go ahead and bite the bullet and fly in or drive in, whatever, the day before. Get yourself a hotel. And that way you'll know you're in the same city as your cruise port and you can just zip on over to the cruise port the next day and be sure to catch your ship. In this case, uh, the cruise ship left port at 4 o'clock, 4.30. So you really did need to be there. We, we actually were uh, had a Princess transfer. We cruised with Princess Cruise Lines and Princess transferred us. We actually did the hotel transfer from the airport to the hotel and then from the hotel to the cruise port the next morning. We did that all through Princess. So uh, we did have a little glitch in the system when we got to Seattle Airport. Uh, we were supposed to take, a, like I say, a Princess uh, transport, but there were many, many, many people flying in at the same time and the left hand didn't quite know what the right hand was doing and we sat for honestly 45 minutes to an hour waiting for our transport which is unusual never ever ever happens honest to goodness it never happens but we did have to wait there for a while and they ended up putting us in a town car they called it a limo <laughs> it wasn't a limo it was like a town car uh, and took us to from the airport to our hotel so we got to our hotel that evening, that afternoon. Uh, actually, it was like one o'clock, one, one or two o'clock by the time we got there. Our room uh, was not ready. There was a ton of people in this hotel checking into this hotel. And Chris is like, we need a room. We were tired. He said, what do we have to do to get a room? And they said, well, we have this room available, but it's $50 more than you had planned to pay. And Chris said, sold. So we paid fifty dollars extra, and wait till you see the room. I'm gonna I'm gonna be pu putting pictures up either in picture in picture, or you know uh, I'll just morph away to the pictures. And here are some pictures of our our room there at the Westin Seattle. It was a beautiful hotel. happy enough campers and the concierge there sent us to a lovely restaurant I can't as I'm sitting here remember the name of it but I'll put it up here and I'll let you guys see a couple pictures of the food we had it was a lovely 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 little restaurant so we came back to our room and we just kind of hung around we didn't really go to uh, any sightseeing or anything we were very tired from our flight we were up at the wee hour. I hadn't slept since actually the morning before because we left the house at like 2.45, something like that, and I needed to get in the shower. And it was like, why go to bed? So I didn't. And I'm not a person who can nap, you know, before a trip. <laughs> so we were tired. So we just kind of, we, we turned in early and knew we had to be up kind of early the next morning, you know. So anyway, so but it was, it was a lovely hotel. We had a beautiful view, as you can see out the window here. And absolutely lovely view we could see the space needle from our room we could see our cruise ship come in the ruby princess we could see it coming in to port on that morning that was kind of exciting you know so you know all in all it was a very good experience and, and you, you know uh, so be sure that you have everything with you if you do a princess transfer you'll just set your luggage inside the door the next morning and they will come and retrieve it i believe it was by 8 a.m 7 or 8 a.m. that morning and they came and retrieved it got it right out from right inside the door took it and transported it right to the cruise port we never laid eyes on it again and uh, then we were to meet down in the lobby by a certain time which we did and they bust us right over to the cruise port again we were not very far away from it so we got bust right on over there and again I'm gonna be showing you pictures throughout you know this whole video here so and I'm just gonna be yammering on because <laughs> I do want to tell you a lot in here. Uh, I might do my blog a little differently and this time and just uh, do it more in a vlog form like this, but I mean, I'm going to try to tell you everything about the cruise, so I'm going to move on along here. So we were cruising on the Ruby Princess this year. Chris and I had not been on the Ruby before. Uh, she's a pretty big ship. She holds, uh, I believe, 3,000 or so people. 
a lovely, lovely ship uh, in great shape. The crew was wonderful. The staff was amazing as always. Our uh, room steward, his name was June. He was absolutely phenomenal. And I'll show you some pictures of what he did with my little moose that you can see sitting back here. I purchased a moose and every day we'd come back to our room and he'd have done something. He put my glasses on him one day reading a coupon book. He put my sunglasses on him one day. He put some other little friends that I'll tell you about around him. One on his head, one night. I, I'll show you some pictures. He did. <laughs> he was so sweet. And let me tell you another thing. You know what? I hear some really negative stuff sometimes in these groups, you know, that I admin. And I love adminning them because I love to help people in any little way I can. But what I have found is that a kindness will bring back a kindness to you. If you take a moment, ask your steward, how, you know, do you have family? Do you get a chance to see them or talk to them? Pay attention to what they're doing. Pay attention to how, you know, uh, what their life is about. And, you know, uh, that's what we do every time we cruise. And not because we want to get a nice city back like he did with my moose or anything like that. Just because we're kind people. And we would not want to be treated the way some of these people treat these people on these cruise ships. Honest to goodness, it's appalling to me. It's just appalling. Okay, I had to say my piece. <laughs> so anyway, as I said, we get we, we the uh, registration... Uh, process is easy peasy lemon squeezy you zip 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 you go and before you know it you're on the ship and I'm not going to go through that whole scenario it's you know you do have to go through an airport type security you don't have to take your shoes off or take your laptops out or anything like that you put your whole bag through a you know through a x-ray machine and you put yourself through an x-ray machine just like you do at the airport you know and before you know it you're on and our stateroom was not ready so we ended up going for our first lunch at the Da Vinci Dining Room, which they had open for lunch. Uh, we met uh, the other admin in the group. Her name is Pam and her husband is Dennis. We met them. with before Barbara and her hubby Don. and had a nice welcome lunch kind of on the ruby and before we knew it our rooms were ready and off we went to our staterooms. We got in our staterooms and started getting settled in and we had a mini suite D506 on the Dolphin deck, uh, which is the ninth deck. Uh, and a mini suite is, has, you know, kind of a queen size bed. It's two queen, twins put together, kind of queen king size bed with a couch and two TVs, one pointed at the bed and one pointed at the couch, you'll see in my pictures and a nice balcony that is uncovered to above, which really wasn't a problem. It never is really, but thankfully it wasn't really a problem for us. Uh, we never got rained on out there. It did rain really bad one day and I'll tell you about that. Uh, and it also has a tub and shower combination. And so it was a lovely, lovely room. Uh, we had gotten it, uh, Pam actually is also our travel agent and uh, for this one and uh, she got us a good deal. Princess was offering a, a, a sip and sail, uh, which is everything that we got to a sip and sail promo, so we, which gave us a lot of onboard cash and it gave us whatever we wanted to drink on board. 
We're not big alcohol drinkers, but it was, it gave us, uh, like Chris gets his specialty coffee every morning. I get sodas, although for this whole cruise, I only had like two, the whole entire cruise. I was so good. I had I either iced tea or water. So I drank iced tea and water, iced tea and water. And, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention is those compression socks. You guys, they are amazing. If you ever have problems swelling on a plane, get yourself some compression socks. I'll put a link in the description for uh, my dear friend Barbara's sister, Pat, actually gave me a lovely site, and I got these. They're really cute. They're kind of florally and whatnot. Really cute. And uh, I, man, oh man, I wore them going and coming home, and I only had a swelling problem one day on the ship, and I'll tell you why, that, why I think that was. Anyway, regardless, I'm yammering. Okay, so uh, Pam and I had made it known that we were going to have a little meet and greet at uh, right after the muster drill you have to go do a you know a safety muster drill everybody has to do that before they can sail that's the law which is just they they tell you about your you know life jackets and where you have to go where the exits are and you have the, where you go to where your muster station is if something were to happen very uh nothing has ever happened but you have to go to your muster drill where they can't sail so we said we would be meeting on the aft uh, deck, nah, 14, I think, Lido deck, 14 or 15. So we met back there. We met all these wonderful people. Here's a picture of all of us together. <laughs> and we had a drawing. Uh, and Pam and I had, but she bought more than I did, had bought uh, little, little, she bought a bunch of these little princess toys, little stuffed dudes. And she gave me one, bless her heart. I didn't have to draw my name, she gave me one. But I had provided, I had made these uh, name tags and I had a set of uh, these, uh, wait a minute, let me figure out how they work again. I had had a set of these Sharpies out and uh, I had made these name tags so everybody could fill out their names so we knew who everyone was so I had them fill out their name, and then we drew for prizes, and I also had a lo another little pad of paper there, and they put their name and put them in a bag, and Pam drew their names, and they each got a little prize. We had a bunch of these little little dudes, and uh, uh, Pam had had a robe, a princess robe that she donated, and I donated a cup, and uh, uh I can't remember everything that was donated, but they everybody got a prize. Every every, every stateroom had a prize, which was awesome. Uh, also, I had made up before we left a magnet. All of the doors and walls in your stateroom on a cruise ship are metal, so you can take magnets to hold up. Like I will show you later, I held up a held up a map, and so on. So I also made everybody a magnet like this and, it, and as you can see it's Facebook group cruise Alaska cruises on princess Seattle round trip inside passage August 11th through the 18th and then there these are all pictures that Chris and I have taken throughout the years and this is the itinerary here you can see Seattle and then we were at sea then Juneau Skagway Glacier Bay Ketchikan Victoria for just an evening and then back to Seattle. So these, everybody put these on their door. So when you walk by, you say, oh, they're in our group, or oh, they're in our group. You could see that, that this was on their door, which was kind of a cool, cool little thing. And they seemed to like that. So we had our little meet and greet there and that was wonderful. And we sailed away and we went to dinner and crashed early that night because we were so tired. So that jet lag will get you, you know, every time. So we woke up uh, the next day, and it was a sea day, which, you know, you can choose to do whatever you want. They have trivia on board that you go to, which we did with Don and Barbara. Almost every day, we did that once a day with them. And we usually went to dinner with Don and Barbara, whether it be at a main dining room or the buffet. And uh, we did the chef's table one night with uh, Dennis and Pam. And that was interesting. Uh, I wasn't as crazy about the food as I was when we did it on the Royal, but there was a lot of fish. I'm not a big fish eater. I'm not a big fish eater when the fish tastes like fish. <laughs> 
I'd rather it not taste so fishy. So, but I'll tell you more about that. Anyway, so, the, you know, the at sea day was kind of just getting your bearings and, you know, getting into the cruise mode, you know. And then the next day, uh, we, so we really didn't do anything special to speak of that day. I'm not even sure, I, I might be putting some pictures up here. Uh, I have my pictures uh, all categorized in my photos. Uh, so if whatever we did, I'll put some pictures up as I'm talking here. But then the next day we woke up and we were in Juneau and we had an excursion scheduled for that day. And the excursion was the Mendenhall Glacier and Whale Quest. Let me back up for just a second. I wanted to show you Princess gives you, I, I think all cruise ships give you one of these. This is called a Princess Patter. And I will be doing a blog and adding my Princess Patters in. But I just wanted to show you this. It kind of gives you what the weather report is for that day. And it usually introduces you to one of the crew members and it gives you an hourly breakdown of things that they have scheduled for. Like this morning, it was Sunday, I, I believe, and there was a Bible study and Zumba and morning mimosas, if you want that, interdenominational Sunday worship service, free class, Alaska Spotlight shopping show, blah, 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 blah. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do on board. If you're bored, that's on you because they certainly have a lot of stuff going on that you can do, you know. And you can choose to go to the seminars. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they're such a hard sell, blah, blah, blah. They're not. You can choose to say no. And that's exactly what I do. I say no, I'm not interested, and I continue on my merry old way. So, regardless. So I wanted to mention the princess powder to you and to keep an eye out and for that they give that to you in your little mailbox outside your room every day so anyway juno back to juno so uh, this day it was raining you guys it was raining and it was um, you know typical alaska weather you know <laughs> but the, our our excursion was not canceled i took my red rain jacket with my hood and off we went you guys our first stop, we, so we had to meet in the Princess Theater, I believe. We had to meet in there, and then they escorted us out and put us on a, a motor coach, and the motor coach took us over to Auk Bay, A-U-K-E, Auk Bay, and we boarded a catamaran type of a ship and off we, boat, and off we went to go whale watching, and we definitely saw some whales, uh, that morning, actually, before we even got off the ship, as we were pulling into Juno, we saw some whales. So I'll show you those two, a couple of whales. And uh, But then we went whale watching, and we saw some whales, and we saw harbor seals, and we saw uh, uh, stellar sea lions, and boy, they were squawking at one another, those sea lions, and humpback whales. We didn't see any orcas, which is okay. We saw humpback whales, lovely, lovely excursion, very smooth, and the waters were choppy that day, but this, but the catamaran that Princess hires is through marine, I think, uh, marine boating or whatever, uh, it's very smooth. So from there, we were out there for two or three hours, and then from there we were bussed over to Mendenhall Glacier, which is the glacier in Juneau. Uh, and it's the only Tidewater Glacier that you can get to by foot, uh, I think, in Alaska. I believe in Alaska. All the rest you have to go by boat. Uh, Juneau, also, you can't get into Juneau or out of Juneau by driving. You either come in. There's three ways you can come in, they say. You can come in by boat or ferry, by plane, or by birth canal. <laughs> That's the three ways they say that you can get into Juneau. So they let us out at Mendenhall Glacier, and this time, we'd done this excursion many times in the past, but this time, I was bound and determined, since I'd lost some weight, that I was gonna do, it was a two mile round trip track. We only had an hour there. It was a walk over to Nugget Falls, which is a huge waterfall that falls right next to Mendenhall Glacier. And again, I'm gonna put some pictures. Here we are at Nugget Falls, and there is 
Mendenhall Glacier. It is raining and dank and nasty. And people walk in front of your camera, they don't even care. But I don't care either because that's Nugget Falls. I've been waiting for a long time to see this. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness gracious. I was bound to determine you guys bound to determine that I was going to get over there to Nugget Falls and take some pictures and then get back and be able to get on you know back on our bus in time it was not an easy trek for me I will admit uh, we were walking very very fast because we wanted to be sure to get there and it was up and down and around curves it wasn't too hard of a, a little hike but it was you know for me who's not in very good shape it was taxing for me, but I did it. I'm gonna cry. That was a bucket list item for me, you guys. That was a bucket list item to be able to get over there and get that close to those massive falls and to get closer to Mendenhall, which was really shrouded in fog this day. We really didn't get very many pictures, pretty pictures of Mendenhall, but we did have Nugget Falls and then we trekked back and it was pouring, you guys. <laughs> I was sopping wet. And this is not a place that you can really, you can take an umbrella and there were plenty of people. We did not take our umbrellas. We had our hoods and, but we were trekking it. We were booking it, you know? So anyway, we got back and you could have rung us both out. <laughs> and we had made dinner arrangements with Barb and Dawn that evening. And, you know, I was texting Barbara. I said, we're coming, we're coming. We're a little late. We're, Traffic is awful. We're coming. We're going to get back. So we walked straight on to the Michelangelo, which is the anytime dining uh, dining room on board Princess Ships. You can either do traditional, which means that you have a set time every day in another um, dining room on board the ship, or you can do anytime dining, which means you can dine anytime. And you can also make dining anytime dining reservations, which is what we had done before that morning. And they were so sweet. They said, don't worry about it. Where else are we going? You know, so they were there waiting for us. And I said, I'm sorry, we don't have time to go change or anything. Cause you, you know, you try to make your reservations when you make them on time. So I sat down the poor, uh, the, you know, the staff is so wonderful. They, they're so caring. They take such good care of you. And I looked at him. He said, what can I get for you, ma'am? I said, could I please have a cup of hot tea? He said, absolutely. And he brought me a cup of hot tea and we had a lovely dinner. They were having crab legs in the main dining room that night. We had crab and prime rib and oh my goodness, blew my diet that day. We had a lovely, 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 lovely dinner. But when I went to get up off of that chair, my right leg, I had really, we think it was a shin splint. Really, I had really done myself in by doing that walk over to Nugget Falls because we were going so fast and I wasn't in very good shape. So I was a hurting pop that evening. So I was popping me some Advil and uh, yeah. Anyway, not going to ruin my cruise. That's for sure. <laughs> So that was, uh, so anyway, the next day we were in Skagway and we had a scheduled excursion with Barb and Dawn again at Crochel's uh, Wildlife Refuge Center. Now, Chris and I had done that before, once before, and I loved it so much. And Barb said, I really, really, really want to do this. So we get out, we go, we have our little excursion tickets. We go out, we get off the ship, we go to meet our little person. And she said, well, there's a problem. They, we might have to cancel this excursion because there are gale force winds between Haines and Skagway. As I said, we docked in Skagway and we had, in order to get to Crochel's, you have to get on the Haines Fast Ferry right there at the dock and go through the deepest fjord, Lynn Canal in Alaska. It's like, 
a thousand or two thousand feet deep something like that but it's like a big wind tunnel you guys and we ended up having to, they canceled our excursion because of gale force winds well of course we're, we're all about safety and of course we were disappointed absolutely i was more disappointed for barb than i was for myself to be honest with you you know i i've seen it chris and i've seen it but i was i was upset for her you know but uh we're going back again she and i and our hubbies are going back next year again so hopefully we can get that in i'm not sure what we're doing that time that's going to be another group cruise with scott singer my buddy scott singer which i highly encourage you cruisers if you're watching to go and check out his scott singer cruises.com or scott singer cruises on facebook awesome young man awesome young man who is currently working for princess and Holland America up in Alaska right now doing land tours and uh, oh he's awesome but anyway so we're doing a group cruise with him next year so hopefully we might get crucials in but we got our money back of course because we had we had booked this through princess so we got our money re refunded which was good and actually Chris and I came out of this cruise even with me purchasing some stuff here that I'll show you we came out of this uh, ahead you know we they owe us like $25, you know, so, which is good because of that excursion, but it's because we got refunded for that excursion. So that was Skagway. So we ended up, Chris ended up going into town and it was actually probably a godsend that I didn't go over there. Chris you have to kind of hoof up a hill and up another hill and up some steps. And it was going to be a little taxing. You know, I've done it before. I know it's not bad, but with that leg, oh my God, it still hurt me today. You guys, it's still, it's still a little painful today. It's getting better and better, but it is a little painful. Anyway. the next day <clears throat> I want to refresh my memory here the next day was uh, Glacier Bay Day oh and I'll be putting some pictures up here this is my very favorite place to go in Alaska on an Alaska cruise and I will not do a cruise itinerary unless it includes Glacier Bay National Park you guys period end of story I will not Glacier Bay for me is almost a soulful experience. I feel like I am in the presence of the Lord right there in all his grandeur. I am telling you, it is amazing. And uh, park rangers are brought on board that um, Glacier Bay National Park uh, park rangers are brought on board every day. And they give you information about Glacier Bay. That's Marjorie Glacier pictured there in that picture. Calving. Calving means that uh, ice sloughs off of the front. That's probably was the size of a 12 story building. It is massive, a massively 250 feet high up, up from the water's uh, level and 100 feet plunges 100 feet down. It's a mile wide. We didn't go see Hubbard, which is six miles wide this time and 150 feet tall. You know, picture a 25 story building. You know, that's how big these things are. They're massive. Samson is barking. My neighbor just came home. Glacier Bay, my very favorite day. And what I did on this day, of course, I'm listening. I'm, I drink all this stuff in. I drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it all in like crazy. Sorry, I had to cut away there to let Sam do his barking. And so. uh, Chris and I also got a picture taken. Uh, we, the... the the captain will take the ship all through Glacier Bay. You're going to pass a few glaciers, yeah. Lamplu Glacier, Glacier, and then you're going to be able to look down through Johns Hopkins uh, Inlet to Johns Hopkins Glacier. You're sitting about five miles away from that glacier, but you can see it clear as life, big as life. And uh, one of the photographers on board took Chris and I, took a picture of Chris and I, 
in front of Marjorie Glacier. And I did purchase this picture. I don't usually purchase a lot of pictures on board, but I did purchase this one. That is Chris's camera lens that he got for his birthday just a few weeks ago. And then I am carrying, that is a 150 by 600 millimeter zoom sports lens that he's holding on his. And then I have a 100, 400 lens on mine. And that's his hand me now. Now you all realize we have been cruising for over a decade and we have been and mostly to Alaska and we have been collecting these lenses for years and years and years. But I love this picture. I thought this was a really great picture of us on that day. And uh, we were out on deck. What the captain does, he'll come and he'll sit the ship in front of the glacier. And we had our camera running, our video camera running. And we stayed on our balcony while we sat straight in front of the glacier. Then when he pivot, he'll pivot the ship 20, or, you know, all the way around to the other side. So the other side has 30 minutes to view the glacier. And he, Chris and I went out and uh, went up and down and took up, up several decks and down several decks and took pictures from all vantage points. So, also wanted to show you this one, this picture from Skagway, the day, the Skagway day that you can see my, uh, or Juno day, excuse me, Juno day, you can see my red jacket. <laughs> I looked a lot better there than I did when I got back. Oh my goodness gracious. But anyway, Glacier Bay Day is without a doubt, hands down, my very favorite day of the entire cruise, entire cruise. That evening, uh, we decided to do the chef's table, and we did that with our friends Pam and her husband Dennis. Uh, the chef's table is a wonderful experience. Uh, they treat you like with kit gloves. I tell you that you you you're given uh, kind of like doctor's jackets or chef coats, and they take you for take you uh, for a tour around the. A galley and they give you several appetizers uh, and I'm telling you you guys I ate a couple of them but then some of them one of them was with caviar and I was like I'll try it and I did try it and Pam and I are proud of ourselves that we did try everything we did try a little bit of everything uh, but anyway we were also given a, a, a cookbook oops sorry this is the cookbook a culinary courses journey and this is from princess and it's signed by the uh, by it's signed by the chef where I'm not sure where he signed this was one. the menu Pause your computer if you want to take a closer look. Cookbook, which is lovely. But this is the cookbook that I'll be donating. I think he signed it. Maybe he didn't sign it. I thought he did. There he is. The E signed it and the Mater D on board signed it. And I'll be donating this because I have another one like this from the Royal. So I'll be donating, donating this to, to Scott Scroop Cruise, folks, so that... that that is a prize that they can give out. They did take some pictures of us this day. This is me and Chris, and this is the Mater D, and this is the chef. Sorry for the glare. It was lovely, absolutely lovely, you guys. Great experience. One that I highly recommend, other than I wasn't that crazy about the food, only because of fish. It was wonderfully made, beautifully presented. It was wonderful, but I'm just not a big fishy, 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 tastes like fish person. Some of the other things I purchased, I wanna tell you about our trip to Victoria in a minute, which was almost the most special day for me in this cruise. But some of the other things, you'll see uh, that this is the map that came with the cruise companion book that I've had for, year, for a couple of years. I bought it last year on the Coral. Everything's still pertinent this year, and it comes with a map, and this is specifically through Princess Cruises, you guys, but it has all kinds of information about wildlife that you might see on this cruise. We saw a good bit of it this time. Also, it on this side, and this is the side I had 
up in our bed, uh, up in our uh, stateroom. It shows you the route for all of the cruises that they do. They do Voyage of the Glaciers cruises, which are either north or southbound from Whittier to Vancouver or Vancouver up. They also do one from a round trip from San Francisco, and they do a round trip from Seattle. All of those are depicted on, all those routes are depicted on this map, and you can follow along and see when you might see certain wildlife at certain places. You can also follow along, they have a map on the TV, and it shows exactly where you are. I just, I just love Princess Cruises. I love how they handle these Alaska cruises. They're also phenomenal. And I am like a geeky person, you know, so I drink all this stuff in like crazy. And this is the Alaska Cruise Companion book. For those of you in the Alaska group, I know you guys see me talk about this thing all the time. I highly recommend it. It gives you lovely stories of the inside passage in Alaska. It tells about the wildlife. It tells about the ports. It just, it's a lovely book that you can follow along. They give you, give you waypoints and page numbers that coordinate with the map in the book. It's, it's, it's an awesome, it's an education too, which you know I love. I love the educational part of a cruise. I love my mother would have eaten this stuff up, you guys. She would have loved this. I so wish she had had the experience, you know? Another thing I wanted to tell you about was the naturalist we had on board. His name was Michael Mojaleski. He was wonderful. He has a book, The Inside Passage. I haven't read the whole thing. I thought I would on the flights and I didn't. I ended up watching movies. <laughs> But it's very good, and he is very good. And I will forever remember which side is port and which side is starboard of the ship because there are times in the cruise, and you keep an eye on your princess powder, where they come on and they give you information about, oh, there's a humpback over here on the starboard right side. That's what he would say every time. For those of you over on the starboard right side, there's a humpback blow, blah, 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 at two o'clock and they put a clock on the ship, you know, with the with the front being 12 o'clock, one, two, you know, do, do it like a clock dial and they yell out. <laughs> and he comes over the, the, you know, the loudspeaker that you can listen through your TV. And uh, or he'll say, oh, there's a sea otter on the port left side. You know, port being four letters, too. That's another way to think about it. Port, four letters, left side, starboard, starboard right side. The little things, you know, that stick in this pea brain of mine. What can I say? But anyway, very good book. Very good, very wonderful. Uh, for those of you who might be cruising on the Ruby Princess, wonderful fella. Michael Mojaleski. Uh, on like, get Glacier Day... Bay Day, I always try to bring Kristen some books for her children, and this time was no exception, so I picked her up a couple of books, one about sea otters that she could read to her little children, her little babies. These guys are so cute, I'm telling you. Aren't they cute? I got her one about sea otters that she can read to them. They chase, they dive, they pop up, surprise, you know. So she'll be able to read all about little sea otters to her babies. Cute little sea otter book. Then I got her Fly Five Black Bears, How Scientists Count Alaska's Animals. You know, and she can just read this to them. Or if she wants to give it to somebody in a higher grade, she's welcome to do that or share it. She has a partner, a guy who, who's a fifth grade teacher who partners with her. She's welcome to give this to his fifth grade class if she wants, if she doesn't think she can use it. But I got her two books from the National Geographic uh, Glacier Bay National Park Park Rangers. I also joined the, uh, uh, this time I donated $30. I also got a little gift. They gave me these two little dudes. Whoops, not this one. There's a little penguin here. Or I mean, a little, yeah, a little black penguin. You don't see penguins or polar bears on an Alaska cruise. You cruise in southeast Alaska. You do not see these, but these are really cute. And these were attached together. And this is their symbol for, and I got a little pen. Oh, so I got that. And these two little fellas. So these, are, this, these were the little tools that my... Uh, stateroom steward purchased. I bought the moose on board the ship and he's in his Alaska, you know, plaid 
like the little bear was last year, but uh, they didn't have Stanley the bear in plaid. They had Stanley the bear in the uh, sailor suit, but they didn't have him on, in plaid on the ruby. So maybe they ran out and just put Stanley out in his uh, in his sailor suit. But little Mr. Moose, he's so cute, look. <laughs> I did purchase a couple of clothing items. They have good sales on board. I purchased this, this is a 2X, but it is a little bit of a, still just fits me, I can barely zip it. So I'm hoping that it will fit me nicer the next time. If not, I can just leave it open, but this is the Alaska State Flower here, very, very pretty. Vest, I love wearing a vest. I, did, I didn't bring my vest out here. Maybe I'll try to remember to do that on my, on my Friday Live. I bought another vest too, good price, uh, that's reversible, red and black, so with Alaska on it. So I got that only because these were such good prices and then I got this, y'all remember that I have one like this that is, uh, I got from my Canada and New England cruise. It's way big on me now. I bought a smaller size this time and this has my favorite place in the world, Alaska, on the back. So I did purchase this because we got all that money back from our, uh, you know, from our cancel excursion. So I was able to do that. They also have sales on board. Uh, the ship, I didn't buy much from them this time at all. I did buy myself a couple of scarves, which are really pretty. I got most of my scarves, a lot of my scarves I get from on, uh, on board the cruise ships. But that's really pretty, I thought. And then I bought like a pink one. Pink and yellow. I thought it was really pretty. You know. And then I did get one t-shirt, it was like $6.50. These were $10 a piece, $10. And then this t-shirt was $6.50. Land of the Midnight Sun, estimated 1959. Y'all got me in just a t-shirt. And I wear these in the evenings, you know, just to be comfy cozy in. I'm not a big t-shirt wearer, to be honest, but I do wear them sometimes. So I got this, and that was all I bought. Yep, that is all I bought. tell you about our day in Victoria. We were scheduled to get there in the evening hours and we did get there in the evening hours and as you all have heard me I've spoken about Liz many 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 times in my videos. Liz if you're watching hi I love you and I'm gonna tell your story now honey so hang on I'm gonna try to get through this. She has given me permission to let you guys know that she had she was diagnosed with ALS. Two years ago, a little over two years ago. And uh, remember how I always say that there are things that I don't hate in this world, that I, that I do hate some things like Alzheimer's that took my mama and cancer that's taken family members and you know any number of other catastrophic illnesses ALS has moved to the top of that list right now my sweet 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 friend Liz is the one that encouraged me several years ago to start blogging and vlogging and dare I say she's my biggest supporter And a lovely lady Dame Stella comes over and visits with Liz at least once a week and they sit and they watch whatever videos I've done and if I've not done a video they go back and they watch old ones <laughs> and I couldn't wait to see her and we were only there in Port Surrey for really not a very long time and we only had about an hour to spend together 
So her husband came and picked us up at the port and, and carried us right over to his house. As you know, I, for those of you who follow me, probably know that you can actually see that you can actually see where the cruise ships dock from her house, from her back deck. But of course, to get from their house around to the cruise port, he had to come out and around, you know. So he picked us up and took us back to her house. And here's a picture of the two of us. What a wonderful reunion we had. I had not seen her since last September when we were in Alaska. And a lot has changed since then with her physicality. Um, she really can't move too much below her neck now. And... Uh, wheelchair bound and they've moved to our hospital bed and as you can see in the picture there in their living room and but her spirit you guys is so strong and she is a wonderful wonderful woman and it was so good to see her it was so so we made the very best of our hour together we just chatted and hugged and kissed and and chatted and chatted and chatted and Chris and her hubby chattered and chatted and we just had a wonderful time. And she gave me a gift this time that she wanted me to have. And she said, Arlen, she said, I know that you, when I put my big Christmas tree up in the family room that, you know, I, I, people say, well, why don't you do a, a snowman tree or why don't you do a snowflake tree or why don't you do a theme tree? And that, that tree will always be what that tree is. And that tree is a sentimental tree to me, full of family uh, ornaments, people, things that people have given me, memory ornaments, all kinds of different, very sentimental ornaments. So she gave me a gift from her Christmas tree. And this was, she, I think she said Italy. Oh boy, Liz, I hope I got that right. I think she had. Uh, Liz is a blogger and her blog is uh, Food for Thought. Food, the number four thought. And she's written many cookbooks. She is oh, a wonderful chef. Uh, uh, so smart, so funny, so sweet and kind and just a woman that uh, you know stupid ALS I'm so angry with it it just it, you know why why you know we ask why but we don't know why but anyway she gave me a beautifully a beautiful blown glass ornament well you should have seen Chris and I packing this puppy up we made sure it was nice and safe. She'd given it to me in a box. And uh, we made sure that it made it home back here to Virginia. And check it out. It's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And we'll be on that tree for as long as I can put it on my tree. Thank you, Liz. I cherish this forever and ever. I love you. Uh, so anyway, we left after our hour because we had to get back to the ship. We had to have our luggage out by a certain time in the evening, and we, we just had to go back. We just couldn't stay any longer, so we made our way back to the ship. That was the hardest goodbye until I see you again, Liz. <laughs> that was a tough one to walk, walk away from. But anyway, that was the end of our cruise. I did want to show you this. Uh, we made it back to the to the cruise ship and got our luggage out and made our way home the next day on you know two flights out, of one from Seattle to Atlanta and then from Atlanta home. And uh, we had a lovely time. One of the ladies on our cruise that was in our group made Pam and I these. Aren't they beautiful? Little lays. <laughs> and she took uh, one dollar bills and, and made she it. made uh, the Alaska state flower, which is the alpine, the alpine forget-me-not. So isn't that pretty? She had them in different colors. We could choose our color. <laughs> so I wore that around for the rest of that evening, and it hung in my in my stateroom on one of my magnet hooks. <laughs> 
So I was so touched that she took the time to make us these. And I think she said her sister uh, made, made the dollar bills. And I know that Can Kristen did this for Candace at Christmas. She made, she looked it up, you can Google it, you know, and make like kind of an origami kind of thing. But I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So that was about my cruise. And I know I've talked uh, probably close to an hour. I say over an hour, but I know I paused a couple of times here. So if you ever have any questions about an Alaska cruise through Princess, don't hesitate to ask me or reach out to me. I'd be glad to try to help you. I am not a travel agent, but I can point you in the direction of a great one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm here for y'all if you ever need any help as far as that goes. You know, I, I love my packing. I, I do a lot of packing videos, a lot of organizational videos and that kind of thing. And this is just, for those of you who watch me on my Country Craft Corner, this is another passion of mine. I know I have many within my uh, Country Craft Corner site with my decorating and my crafting. But this uh, cruising is another little bit of a, a, of a joy that I feel very blessed to be able to do every now and again. And, uh, and I'm happy to share whatever I can with you guys. Uh, really and truly, that's why I do my YouTube channel. I missed you guys terrible when I was gone too. I really missed the interaction with you guys. So I'm back now. And like I said, I'm going to do my Friday live and maybe some other stateroom. I'm not sure what else I'll get up this week. I am a little tired still, I will admit. So, but I will get back in that saddle. I'm already back in the saddle, you know, and I will be uh, doing my Friday live and chit-chatting with you guys there on my Country Craft Corner. And then we'll get back into the swing of things next week, probably deconstructing my patriotic finally and getting ready to get some fall decor up in this house. Woohoo! So I also have a really cool thing to share with you on Friday that I found at Joann's. I'll be sharing that with you on Friday. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this one. So I think I'll shut this one down for now. And uh, let me just say that I hope that all is well with everyone and that there is no one. And now we all know there is someone in my life, personal to me, personally for me, one of my very best friends suffering with a catastrophic illness. And I know she does have somebody there with her every day, helping her through each day. I hope that anybody else out there who is suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain also has someone in their life that is there with them, helping them through each day. I hope that there's nothing weighing on your heart or on your mind, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. And with that, I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, and I keep you all in my thoughts and prayers all the time. So I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.